Okay. Okay, so the first question is calculate the slope. So remember, you can either use your calculator or you can use the, the formula. And the formula to calculate the slope, we've dealt with them yesterday. The slope is B1 and it's calculated by using all these complex formulas that are here. I need to remove all these other things. So that is the slope V1. So it's calculated by using the sum square measures of X and Y, which is this formula here at the bottom and divide by the sum square measures of x, which is that formula there at the bottom. So we're going to be using those two formulas. I'm going to give you time. Sorry. So we will need to be calculating V1, which is the sum xy minus The sum of, okay, I can start with an x, sum of x times the sum of y divided by n divided by the sum of x squared minus sum of x divided, of squared divided by n. You can use that. Then it means if you're going to use the formula, you need to multiply x with y, and then once you are done with x times y, you write the total. So here we will have a total, and that total is the same as the sum. It will be that value you substitute there. Then the next one is saying sum of x. So it means you need to add all the x values, and there you will calculate the total, and that will give you the total of sum of x. And the sum of y as well, you have to add all of them and calculate it, and it will give you the sum of y. Your n will be how many there are. You just count how many you have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight, and that will be your, your n, and you substitute. Your sum of x squared, you will have to create x squared and square each x value, so one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, and once you get the answer, you add all of them, that will give you the sum of your x squared. And then when you're done with that, you can, I press the, the arrow quickly. Then when you are done, you substitute, you calculate, and it will, it will give you that. Otherwise, if you are using your calculator, you should calculate using the, uh, you should calculate using the state mode one. And if you have already calculated it and you know the answer, you can tell us what the answer and you can also tell us how you calculated it. If you calculated it manually, like with the formulas, also you just need to let us know that you use the formula so that then it saves us a lot of time to, to get all the values. I'm, um, I use my Casio. 
okay so if you use the casio it's good it will be it's quick did you get the answer Uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, your answer was option number. Or oh, what was your answer? Not a true or false question. Um, we will do it together. Don't worry. I just want to see what answer did you get? Anyone? Or are you still busy calculating? Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yeah, sorry, I have, I have um, a challenge with the network. Uh, sorry, the answer that I, I found was minus 1.26. Minus 1.26, okay. Yes. No problem. Others, are you busy calculating? Okay, so the others are quiet, so we can work through the one on the Casio on the phone. I also want to show you on the phone how to get to the sum sums. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm saying the phone on the calculator. The sum, the sum sum values. So, okay, so. Take this a little bit up. I'm going to capture all the data from my calculator. I'm doing the stat. My one is three. And I'm doing the line, which is AX plus B. And I just need to capture all the values onto the calculator. So one equal, two equals, three equals, four equal. 6 equals, 8 equals, 9 equals, 11 equal. And go to the other side. And 23 equal, 22 equal, 20 equal, 15 equal, 17 equal, 14 equal, 15 8 equal. Mrs. Boy. Yes. Uh, I just joined you now. So may you please show me how do you enter all the information, the data? Do you use if Casio you or, or what kind of calculator do you have? I'm using Casio. You're using Casio. So your yes. Casio will be different to my one. I'm going to start yeah, from the mine is, mine is FX A2MS. Yeah. So it will be different to my one. So all okay. the calculators, they look almost exactly the same, even though it's Casio. Okay. So you need to press mode, press mode. Mode. And uh, I guess on your calculator, stat is on number two, ne? 
Yes, yes, it's number S-T-A-T two. S-T-A-T is on number two. Press the two button. Yes. And you should see diagram like this. And we know that says A plus B X. You see that one? No, it doesn't have uh, that one. What does it have? Yeah. No, it displays the SD on top. And what else? There should be another one at the bottom. What does it show? Uh, nothing is showing here. Okay, press mode. Mode. What do you see? Uh, comp 1, SD 2, reg 3. Yeah, press reg. R- reg is number 3. Yeah. Press rec, and do you see something that looks like my one? Okay, there's a, uh, yeah, there's lo- lean log X, and then uh, power invoice quad and. No, but do you do you have one where it says A plus B X? Let me check. No, it doesn't have. Uh-uh. Did you press three for reg? For the E R G. Press mode R-E-G. button. Yeah, press the mode, mode button. Yes. You set on the mode button when you're pressing it, you're seeing zero for comp. Yes. And you're seeing two, uh, one for something. What do you see? One is comp, two is S D, three is uh, R E G. Yeah, but press if three. I. Yeah, press three for R E G. Press three, which is the regression. Okay. Press three. Yes, I did. And then what do you see? Number one is the lean. Number two is log, and then the number three is exp. Okay. The number one is lean. L I N. L I N. Okay. Number press two the lean. Yeah. It's fine. Press the lean. Uh, lean. Yeah, it changed to red, uh, but uh, nothing is showing here. Yeah? Uh, what do you see? Okay, let let me check something here. But if I press uh, mode for the second time, it's, it's showing something else here. Yeah? Mm. That's the. Uh, there's uh, number one of uh, showing fix. Number two is the SCI. Number three is norm. And then the other one is showing number one, beast and con- cont or continuous. I'm uh, not sure. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Um. Um, when, yeah, I don't know what, what is happening on your calculator, but if you are using the FX 82 ZA, is it the same calculator? 82 MS, my. MX. MS. Um, um, then it means you will have to calculate manually for now until I see what, what your calculator looks like. Because when you press the mode function on your calculator, it should show you okay. the STAT button uh, with the number that corresponds to that. And if you press the number that corresponds to the STA button, where on my one it shows as as 3, which takes my calculator to SD. The first one, it should be your SD, which is your descriptive statistic. Okay. The second one, it should give you your line or your regression. It should say L-I-N-E, line. 
Okay. So since yours, when you press mode, it it doesn't give you state. It gives you either you need to press the reg or B. So when you press the reg, it should give you a table or it should um, you should be able to capture the data on your table. Capturing your data, you will use uh, at the bottom of your calculator, you should have STO and you should have an M plus. Yeah, there is M plus, yeah. They, is there an STO there? No, it's... Uh, it, uh, what is next M to plus. M plus? What is what is the button next to M plus? Mm, are you on are you left. on what are you on WhatsApp? Yes, I am. On our WhatsApp group. Can you take a picture of your calculator and post it on the WhatsApp group? I will check on it later on now okay. and then I will help you with the steps. But for now, let let us continue. Okay. With this exercise. Um after this exercise, then I will check the picture. On the WhatsApp. Okay, no problem. Post it, yeah, post it there now. Okay, so let's capture our data. Um, if I go mode and I go three for step and I press the two for the linear regression and I get the table, I just capture the information. One equals Two equal, three equal, four equal, six equal, eight equal. Uh, Oscar, do you want to say something? Okay, eight equal. nine equal and 11 equal. Then we're going to capture the other information. I want to hide this. Uh, 23 equal, 22 equal, 20 equal, 15 equal, 17 equal, 14 equal, 15 equal, and 8 equal. And I should be captured. All the data should be captured. Now we're ready to calculate V1. Remember our formula, e, our our linear regression equation, it's B0 plus B1x. And on our calculator, it is A plus BX. So it means for B1, I'm going to be pressing B. So shift and go to STA button. And I need to press the reg button, which is button number five. And you press five. And here I have A, B, and C, and the, the X and the x squared and the y. So I'm looking for b. So pressing b, which is 2, and I press equal. And the answer I get is not minus 1 point. This says minus 1.15, not minus 1.16. So let's see if I go back shift and I go back stat. I want to see my data to see if I captured the data correctly as well. So it's 1 and 23, 2 and 22, 3 and 20, 4 and 15, 6 and 17, 8 and 14, 9 and 15, and 11 and 8. The data is captured correctly. Then why am I not getting the right answer as the one on the answer sheet? So mode. Oh, sorry, I need to go. Go stat. 
and we press five for and we press two and press equal. Hi, ma'am. Um, I'm still getting the same uh, one uh, minus 1.26. It's actually one minus 1.2 uh, recurring five. Maybe let's go back and see if your, your data was captured correctly. I did uh, shift. <laughs> I did go check my data is captured correctly. Set one and I go to data, which is two. It takes me back to the table. One and 23. Two and 22. Three and 20. Four and 15. Six and 17. Eight and 14. Nine and 15. 11 and 8. Since I have two calculators, it's fine. We can always check with the other calculators as well. So mode, must go back to normal. Take it to state mode, which will be one. And I'm looking for one for A plus BX. I have the table completed. Second function shift. Okay, so I can capture the data. I'm going to try and see if I can capture the data, which is one. Oh, not going to allow me to capture the data. Okay, one and 23. And, huh, it doesn't want me to capture it that way. I must just do it this way. One. Two, enter three, enter four, enter six, enter eight equals nine equal eleven equal. So there are eight. Must go to the top. Twenty-three equal, twenty-two equal, twenty equal, fifteen equal, seventeen equal, fourteen equal, fifteen equal, and the last one is eight equal. Okay, so since we have all of them, now what we need to do is to go on and off the calculator and calculate our B1. And with this calculator, it's easy because all of them are on one and we're looking for one, which is that. And on this one, I get minus 1.256. So my cashew is not working well. And this, it gives me the correct information. Now, all I, I wanted to say also, uh, to get this sum sum from using the table as well, because sometimes somewhere in the question, they might ask you to make to choose the correct answer. And maybe one of the option is the summation of X and Y is whatever the amount. You need to make sure that you know how to do that. So once you have captured your data, you can also find the sum sums. If I press sum, uh, I go back to the stat. Let's go out. If I press alpha and I go back to stat, and if I click on zero for stat, it will give me the other measures. So let's go to zero and I press equal. 
oh sorry e is zero then it gives me my n which is eight it will give me the mean of x which is 5.5 it will give me my standard deviation and it will give me my variant and if you scroll down it will give you the population in case if the question was for the population standard deviations you will get those but at the moment we're not interested at those one. Oh, sorry and then it will also give you your sum of x and you can see there the sum of x which is that value so if we go to the formula here we can already start populating the values so this is the sum of x so B1 equals minus, we know the sum of X says it's 44 times the sum of, um, we can find the sum of Y. If we go down, we should get the sum of Y. Uh, the sum of Y is 134. 134. Divide by N. And we can also find the sum of sum, sum, sum of x and y, which is 624. So 624. Oh, sorry. This is n is 8. So we know that we got it at the beginning. Sum of x squared is somewhere at the top. Sum of x squared is 332 minus. The sum of x, which is 44, squared divided by 8. As you can see, if you calculate this, you should get also minus 1. Point, minus 1.26. I just want to see why on this one we're not getting the right answers. If I go shift and you go to stat, on here, you do have also what we call the sum sums. Uh, the sum sums are those summations. So if I press three, you should get all of them. So if I want, let's say I want the sum of x, y, which is button number five, and I press equal 624. I must go back, number three, and I want the sum of x, which is button number two. And it's 44. And if I go back, sum of, go shift, set, three, and I want sum of y, which is button number four. And I press equal, I get 134. I need sum of x, y squared. Let's go back. Shift, set, three for sum, sum of x squared. And that will be the sum of x squared, which is button number one, which is equals to 332, which is the same as what we have. So I don't understand why my answer for D1 is not working. So if all the values match, we should be getting the same value of B. Sum, stat, reg is five. Shift, stat, button number five for reg, and I see there is two for B, and I press equal, I still get the wrong answer. Okay, just want to restart the and see maybe it's the functions that is three, two, and I want to capture them again. One equal, two equal. 3 equal, 4 equal, 6 equal, 8 equal, 9 equal, 11 equal. Twenty-two equal, 
20 equal, 15 equal, 17 equal, 14 equal, 15 equal, 8 equal. And I've captured all the values. Go out, shift, set, and I want reg, which is 5. And I press 2, and I press equal. And wow, it works. There we go. And the answer is that. So now I have my data on both calculators and they are working fine. So sometimes it's just the setting on your calculator. You just need to clear your calculator. Some calculators have a reset button at the back. If things are not working well, you just reset your calculator from the back and everything will be will be on Kidori. Okay. So that's how you calculate the slope. Now we need to go and calculate the intercept, which is B, B1. Remember your intercept is your B0 is equal to your mean of Y minus your B1 times the mean of X. Okay. Have you calculated it? Remember what B1 yes. we found it? It was that number. And remember when you have your answers, you can keep all the values on your calculator. You don't have to. Okay. So on your calculator, what do you get? Let me see before. Before I do it on the calculator. I got 23.66. 23.66, that's what you got. So let's see. On your calculator, I also you got your date. Sorry? I also got 23.66. Yes, because on your calculator, if you have already stored your values onto the calculator, you just press shift and press that and go back to rank five and then go and answer A or A, which is one, and press equal, which is 23.66. If you don't have this kind of a calculator, you're doing it manually, remember you would have calculated your means. So in this instance, I'm going to use the sum sums, which is three. So I remember that your mean of y is the sum of y divided by n, which in this instance you will have it. It will be um, the sum of y will be on button number four. And remember, we calculated all this. I'm not going to repeat them. It was 134. So we found that it was 134 divided by 8, and that will give you your mean. Your mean of x will be the mean of x will be the sum of x divided by n, and we calculated that was 44 divided by 8. And that's all what you do. So I can just calculate them manually. So 134 divided by 8 gives you 16.75. Forty-four divided by eight equals, and that gives us five point five. And what we do, we just come to the formula and substitute sixteen point sixteen point seven five minus our B one. Our B one, we found it. It was minus one point two five five number numbers, some number times 5.5. So you just 
say 16.75 mm -hmm. minus into bracket. I can also do it this way. I can say shift stat and I can go find five and I can go find two and I can just put the there and I can multiply that with 5.5. Please don't disappoint me. Work, 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 work. Equals 23.65. So you can use your calculator shortcut. Find a way to use your calculator to do most of these calculations in the exam. Remember, exams are, are time-based. So try and see where you can cut off on most of the time when you do the calculations. Okay, so what do you get for number three? It asks for the regression. Remember also, you can also use formulas or you can use your calculator. Ma'am, I got 0.85. You get 0.85, which will be option number E. So let's see if we get 0.85. Shift 1, and you go back to REC, which is 5. And we're going to press number C, which is R. Number 3, R, not what I did. Shift stat, number 5. And we press three for reg and we press equal. And I get a minus. Let's go to my other calculator since I know that my casio sometimes acts up. So let's go I there. That answer is still correct. Yes. Shift. We have to square it. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. So we're calculating R squared. Yes, you're right. So this is, is the R, not the R squared. So we need to square it. You are well wide awake. And when we press equal, we get 0, 0.85. Remember when you press the R, you just need to press the X squared button. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is coefficient of determination, R squared. Okay, so before we move to, or oh, we can also move to the R so that then I can help the other person. So I already found R. So by just pressing the square of that answer will give me R, but the problem here will be, it will take away the negative sign. So the best way to do it is to always go back and get the, the actual value, which is, R is on button number three, it will be negative. So we shouldn't always use the shortcut because you yesterday, use, yesterday no, you said okay. we must just divide it, um, square root it, and then I got yeah. to 0 0.92. Yes, you can square root it, but you must but remember the, the sign, sign in front. Yes, you must remember the sign. Okay. So if you do the shortcut, uh, when you do the square root, it takes it will not take into consideration this the the sign because the square root will also only work with the positive value that you have on your r squared. So what you do if you don't know what the value of r is, but you have calculated your b, you have calculated your b one, b one and your r are always telling you the direction of your slope. So because B1 tells you the direction of the slope, it also tells you whether is it a negative slope or a positive slope. As much as 
when the regression tells you the strength of the slope, whether is it positive or negative, and is it strong or weak, it will always have a sign corresponding to one another. So if you are not sure, let's say you didn't calculate R, you were given R squared, but you, were, you calculated B1. So based on the value you got on B1, using your R squared to find your R, you are going to put the, the sign, which will be the same as your slope. So if your slope was negative, it means your R value will be negative. If your slope was positive, it means your R will be positive. So there are always shortcuts. Okay. But you need to be very careful when you use them as well. Sure. Thank you. Yes. So we've calculated this and it is minus. As you can see, they both appear on the on here, the answers. So if you did, if you took a shortcut and didn't take into consideration the negative, you will choose D as your your answer and it will be wrong. So the answer is C. Okay, before we move on, I just want to make sure that I help the person who is using the KCO's SVPAM. This is those old, old, old KCO calculators uh, before the modern one with the fraction. So on your one, are you there? Is that person there? Doesn't look like he's still here, no? Are they gone? It looks like he left. Oscar. Uh, was it Oscar? Yes. Okay, it's fine. I will get hold of him later and then I will uh, try and explain his calculator to him. It's always nice if I see the kind of a calculator because then it will guide me what kind of steps I can help you with. All right. Okay, cool. So let's move on to the next one. Now, the next one, we don't have to use the calculator because they are not giving us the table, but they're giving us the summations, which means they have calculated all the sum sums, and then they are asking you to calculate the slope. So we know what the slope is, so you just need to calculate your slope. So B1 is equals to the sum of x and y minus the sum of sum of x sum of x times sum of y divide by n divide everything by the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divide by n
Sorry, ma'am. I have 0 0.23. You have 0 0.23, which is that one. Okay. Also got the same. Okay. So since I have a cashew calculator, just to show those ones, uh, I need to take the calculator to normal mode. Okay. Two, two, six, nine, minus. Why do I have so many minuses? 75 times 300 divided by 10. Divide everything by 645 minus 75 squared divided by 10. and equal change values answer is 0 0.3 oh, uh, 0 0.23 oh, three oh, which here we have the answer to two decimal which is 0 0.23 okay calculating b0 remember b0 b0 is your mean minus V1 times the mean of X. And have you got the answer? Ma'am, I have 28.27. You have 28.27. So what I've done is I took, I didn't change the calculation that I did on the calculator. So what I did with that, I added some of the values. Since I am calculating the mean, I know that my formula on the mean is the mean is 300 of y, it will be 300 divided by 10 minus our B1, which we calculated using the same formula. So I didn't change it. So the whole thing in the bracket is by B1. Multiply that with the mean of x, which is 75 divided by 10. And if I get to the answer, let's see if I get the same answer as 
as you and the answer is 28.27, which is 28 that answer. Okay. The next one is to calculate the coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination. I'm going to go to the uh, exercise we did last time because we did write the formula down. Because I remember that that formula is very, very long. Which is B0 times, you must write it down. B0 times the sum of Y. plus V1 times the sum of X and Y minus your sum of Y squared divide by 10 or divide by N, sorry, divide by N. Everything divide by the sum of Y squared minus the sum of Y divide by, or sum of Y squared divide by N. So we'll go into our question. Let me rewrite the, that. It's B0 times the sum of Y plus B1 times the sum of XY minus the sum of Y n divide by so remember we calculating r squared here yeah. n squared which is the sum of y squared minus sum y squared n and that is the formula so just substituting the values and then you do the calculations b B1, oh, we need to go back to those values. It was, what was B1? 0 0.2307. 0 0 oh, you have all those numbers. 0 0.230303. Times the sum of Y, which is times 300 plus B1, we did calculate it just now, and we found that it was 28.27. Uh, sorry, um, we, we, we're making a mistake. Uh, B1 and uh, B0 is actually um, in, 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 in wrong places. In your, in your yeah, yes. formula. Oh, in the formula. Yes. B0 times B1. Okay, sorry. When I'm substituting, I'm substituting the wrong values. Yes. All right. Yes. So this should be 28.2727. 27. This should be 0 0.230303 times. Our sum xy, which is 2269, minus our sum of y, divide by, uh, I'm going to assume that it's also still going to be 10. We're still using the same five till nine. It uses ten. So yes. divide by ten. Yes. Divide by ten. Divide everything by sum of x squared, which is nine six 
zero nine minus the sum of x, which is three hundred squared divided by ten. Um, did you get the answer? So if you see on my calculator right now, that is the answer. When it has the exponents of to the power of a negative number, it means there are three zero, one zero before the comma and one zero after, uh, two zero after the comma. Alternatively, to make sure that you see what the value actually looks like, you can add one to this value. And always remember that you added the one so that it makes sure that it takes away this the exponential value. So remember, this is 0 0.007, which makes it option number G. So every time you see a value that ends with multiply 10 to the power minus 4 or minus 3, it means there is one zero. After before the comma and they are three zeros, so you will count four zeros. One will be before the comma and the three leading. If it's minus three, it will be two zeros after the comma. One before and two after the comma. If it's five, it will say one zero before and then four after the comma, something like that. So there will always be two zeros before that number that you see and then the number will proceed. So if I take away the one, it will take me back to the exponential value as well. Okay, so that is how you will calculate the values and get to the bottom of the answer. Okay, then go into the next one, which is eight. And we will almost be done. It means today we might also finish early. So eight asks you to calculate the coefficient of correlation, which is R squared. Now you can use you can use the uh, this answer that you got, which is zero point zero. This answer that we have, and take the square root of it. Uh, gosh, my answer is no longer there. Um, this you can take the square root of the answer you have, which was 0 0.0071 and some odd number. I'm just going to use those four digits. 
and that will give you your coefficient of correlation. You will need to go to the slope, which is B1, and check. The slope was positive, so it's fine. Therefore, it means the answer you will get there will be positive. Um, and the answer is 0, 0,08. 0, 0,8, and that will be. So just to, to make sure that you know where the sign is after you take the square root, is that go to the slope and see what the value of the slope is. But since you are writing an exam and exam has 25 questions and all questions come from all the chapters or study units that you are doing, you might find there are only two questions in the exam relating to the study unit, study unit 11. Or there might also be one question relating to study unit 11. Okay, so in terms of theory, like we did yesterday, you need to know how to interpret or decipher some of the values. So here they give you the equation of a straight line and they also give you this uh, coefficient of determination. So, The question, like we did yesterday, remember, you need to know how to explain the coefficient of determination. You need to know how to interpret if we substitute the values into the formula. You need to know how to interpret the value of the slope. You need to be able to interpret how you estimate the values. Sorry, ma'am. Mm -hmm. On this one, I got a bit stuck because if you look at the first one, it says the value of y when x is equal to zero. So if I then substitute x into zero, that means it's going to be 0 0.23, which then gives you that answer, correct? But yes, then which means this is correct. Yes, but then if you remember, the question is asking you to find the incorrect answer. The incorrect yes. answer. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that this is correct. If I substitute zero there, then this disappears. Y will be equals to twenty eight point two seven. That's correct. You got it. Okay. But that's not the answer we needing. We're looking for. We're looking for the one that is incorrect. So you go to the next one. You do the same. You substitute the value of two. Where you see x, you put 2. I'm not getting the same answer there. So if. The answer is 28.73, which makes that uh, be incorrect. And this yes. makes Sandra this correct. Be incorrect. Yes. And remember, you can stop there and could and move on to the next question. But lucky enough, this might be the last question in your exam and your four marks weighs on it. You can just continue and carry on if you still have enough time. But you are looking for the incorrect and that is the incorrect one. Similar to the C, the total variation of Y, remember this one now they put it correctly. Yesterday it was, the total variation in X was explained by Y. So this one, it says the total variation in Y is explained by X, which then this is correct. If you go to what the one for yesterday, you will see the difference. And that is where you need to know how to explain the values. So you see the total variation in X was explained by Y, and that is why this was incorrect and we were looking for the correct answer. <clears throat> so that is correct. And this one says the value of y is uh, y when x is equals to 1, it will be equals to that. So if I change this to 1, that will be equals to that because that will be, is that correct or incorrect? Uh, I think here they don't make it. 
Does it make that sense? Is, that is correct. Oh, yes, it is correct. Yes, it is correct. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it will be correct. And the last one it says when the unit increases, the other one increases by. So we know that when we add a unit increase, it means when we add one, it will increase by that number because the number is positive. It will increase. If this was negative, it will say it will decrease by 0, 0.23 because if I add 0, 0.23, it will decrease the value of your y. Remember, we calculate in the y. It will decrease if the answer for this one was negative. But since it's positive, it means the value of y will increase by that number. So which means that is correct. And the last, last, last one, and then we can call it a quiz. So at least we are right on time. We don't have to spend two hours online. Which of the following statement is incorrect with regards to the coefficient of correlation? So now you need to know the coefficient of correlation and how to interpret it. And remember that coefficient of correlation, which is R, lies between minus one and one. And if it's minus one, it is perfectly negatively correlated. If it's one, it's perfectly positively, positively. correlated. If yeah. it's zero, there is no relation. Né? Then the others are in between. There is a weak relationship, there is a stronger relationship, or we can also say strong on this on this thing. We can say it's strong. We can say it's strong because and you need to to interpret R. So between zero uh let's say zero and thirty-five we say it is weak we did this you got this Is the answer A? Okay, we can check. Uh, since you saying it's A, we're going to start from the bottom. We'll work from bottom up so that we end up with A. Okay. Number E, a coefficient of correlation closer to zero indicates a weak linear relationship. If this was 0, 0,02, it is not zero, but it's closer to zero. So this will be a weak relationship. Né? Since anything between zero and 35, whether it's negative 25 or positive 35, anything that is closer to zero will be a weak relationship. A coefficient of correlation closer to one refers to a stronger relationship. Like I said, they, if it's 0 0.99, there is a strong relationship. It's not one, it's not perfectly, but it's at least stronger. So we call this strong relationship. A negative coefficient correlation shows a negative relationship. We've done, just covered it. If it's negative, it means the relationship is negative a positive like we said if the value is positive it will show a positive relationship so it shows a positive relationship between the two values a coefficient of correlation takes the values ranging between zero and one 
that is the range for their coefficient of correlation. Incorrect. And that concludes our session for today. Thank you for coming and thank you for joining. Please make sure that you complete C, D, and E activities for preparation for your exams. You don't have to do all of them, but the questions are there. You can do it online or you can do it on hard copy paper that we have given you as your lectures, lecture has given the, the questions and posted them on his site. And they are also online in case you want to know the feedback immediately because I don't think there are feedback on the on here. So online you will get the feedback to know whether you did it right or wrong because you will get the answers from there. After you have submitted, you will immediately get, when you press the submit button, it will give you your responses as answers for the correct answers or not. Otherwise, thank you guys for coming through. I will post today and yesterday's videos later today. You can check them if you want to check again how we did some of the calculations or some of the steps. Thank you and all of the best. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Same with you, ma'am. Thank you, yes. ma'am. Enjoy your um, day. Just a quick question, ma'am. Um, are we having sessions uh, for, for, for the coming week? Yes. Every week until you go write the exam, Fridays and Saturdays, you're going to be going through uh, the assessment. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to, to do because uh, we were supposed to do um, chapter six, uh, seven. Or is it six? No, chapter seven until chapter uh, study unit seven until study unit. 11. 11. Uh, in the this week, but because of the email that came from your lecture to say you can do the assessments online, I thought no, let's do the assessments this week, and then I will post the the assessment for chapter six or study unit six until study unit eleven during this week. So we will do that on Friday and Saturday. I will post them tomorrow or to today. Probably I will post the assessment today so that you have it available for the rest of the week. You can go through it. We will go through it together as well on Friday and on, on Saturday. It's best if you go through it on your own so that then when we come together, you can see where you went wrong and go fix your mistake. Then the following week, I will do a timed assessment, or oh, not the timed assessment, how many weeks do we still have? We will do another assessment, which will do chapter one and chapter until for the full uh, study unit. And then closer to the exam, I will do the timed one so that you sit and do your assessment for two hours. It will expire after two hours once you have started. So you need to make sure that you have enough time to do your assessment. This is just to train you for the next exam that is coming so that you can pace yourself and be able to do your assessment online. That's it. It's just for practice purpose. And after every assessment, we will come together. We will go through the exercise together and do the answers together. And I will show you how to work it out, how to answer it, where you can take shortcuts and where you cannot take shortcuts and so forth. Okay. okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Enjoy your thank weekend. You. you too. Thank you, ma'am. Enjoy your day. Bye. 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 Thank you.